Hi, BC family, and welcome to your midweek devotion. This week, I want to talk to you about hidden things in the darkness. So I'm going to start with Isaiah 45, 3. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. I heard that verse this last week, and it just really stuck with me talks about how I will give you the treasures of darkness. Now, when I read this, I think about being in a mine deep down underground. It's dark and it's cold and it's a place where you don't want to be. I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> this is completely relatable with life because sometimes we're in these dark places, right? Places in life where our world feels upside down, where we wake up and for one moment, we forget about the reality that we're living in and suddenly it all sinks in what we're facing, what we're up against and what our problems really are, right? <clears throat> and we remember those issues that we face. But this verse, I just keep hearing, but God, but God knew that we would have these moments. And he said to us in Isaiah 45, I will give you treasures of darkness hidden riches of secret places. Deep down in those mines, instead of trying to escape the darkness, miners begin to mine and they dig and they uncover the most rarest of gems, uh, you know, precious oils. The most valuous gems, most valuable gems and treasures are never just laying out in the open in the easy places. Can't just walk outside and find diamonds and all those other rich resources. No, those treasures are in the dark and they take work to get them. But when you find them, they're so rare and so valuable and so amazing. And we have the same choices in life, right? When we find ourselves under and in the dark and in that cold and place where we don't want to be, we have a choice. Do we mine for the treasures that God has placed there for us or do we just try to escape the darkness around us? When we look to him and we say, okay, God, I'm in a place I don't want to be. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go from here, right? We can say, but what do I know? I know that you are a good God. You are here for me. You are making a way for me. You have plans to prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. They're not to harm me. I know that you love me unconditionally. I know that what has happened to me isn't a shock to you, God. He knows it's not derailing his plans or catching him off guard, right? It doesn't do that. So I'm going to look to you, God, and I'm going to find the treasures that you have given me in this dark place, right? Speaking from experience, it is in these dark moments of life that God has given me, and I've seen it in so many other people, secret treasures, things that you never saw coming, a growth in you that never would have been possible had you not sought him in those deep, dark moments, right? This Sunday, I taught the kids about Elijah and the boldness that he had with King Ahab. Elijah didn't have a what if mentality. He had such a strong relationship with God that what if never crossed his mind. He challenged a king. He went up against 450 prophets and he even mocked them. And the entire time he stood his ground with such confidence that God would pull through that he made his altar impossible. He built it with stones and poured water on top all of which you're thinking somewhere in the back of your mind, like, man, this is kind of like, what if God doesn't show up? But he never had that what if. He knew God would show up no matter what, right? <clears throat> and this is a place I personally want to be. <laughs> I want to be like Elijah in a place with God that when the darkness hits, it's never a what if or a how come, but instead it's, what treasures do you have hidden in the darkness for me, God? Because I know you're fighting my battle and I see the victory. So along this journey, I want to find the hidden riches that you have for me, right? It's a, a really different way of thinking about the problem that you're walking through. So this is how you walk out 
those dark moments in our lives, right? With peace that no one understands because we don't run from the dark or hide. Instead, we stop and we begin mining for the treasure in the darkness that God has for us. How do we do that? We do that by casting our cares on him. And it isn't, I cast my care on you, God. And when I don't see the answers in a week or in a month or in a few months, then I reel it back in like a fishing pole and I take back my worry and my anxiety and my anger and my fear and my offense. That's not the same type of casting. No, we cast our cares on God with boldness. We throw it so far from us without even thinking and we say, I see the victory, God. You are fighting this battle. And then we walk through these seasons with a peace like no other. That verse ends with that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. I love that so much. He calls you. He calls me by name. He put that at the end of telling us how there's treasure in the darkness for us by saying, I call you by name. He made it so personal. He is with us in our pain. He is with us in those dark moments, in those dark places. The choice is ours though, to seek him, to find him, to choose him or not, right? You can worry or you can pray. You can complain or you can look for the blessings. You can keep walking on the water while the storm and the winds and the waves are raging or you can look at your problems and begin to sink. But the best part of all of that with God is he is with you no matter what path you choose because he knows you by name. It is personal to him. You are so loved and he knows every single thing he has for you and he wants for you, but he will never leave you in those dark places, right? So even if you sink, Jesus is there to pull you up like he did with Peter when Peter tried to walk on the water and then he got caught looking at his problems and began to sink. Jesus was still there in the midst of those choices. So when your season when you're in that season and you're walking through and you get to that end, because all seasons end, it will end. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it'll end, but I remember Jerry Seville said this and I've repeated it to myself multiple times in those dark places, this too will pass. It will end, right? Having done all to stand, stand, it's gonna end. And so when you're walking through ends and there is that end, are you gonna walk away with the priceless gifts and treasures that only God could have built in you and for you, that no one can take away from you, that you mind in those dark places, right? That you mind in that season or not. So this week, I want you to just think about that. I want you to think when I'm in this dark place, when I'm going through these things that are just so hard and so hurtful, am I going to mine for the treasures that are in the darkness so that I can come through this season growing stronger in my faith, growing in him, coming through better than I ever imagined. I mean, God says he does over and above all that we could dare ask or think. If that's what you want to come through with, then in these dark places, don't try to escape it. Don't try to hide from it. Stop and say, God, you said you have given me treasures in the darkness, hidden riches in these secret places and begin to mine for what God has for you and he will bring you through and you will come out of it with the most valuable, priceless treasures that you could possibly imagine. Have a great week. Bye.